Hello and welcome to Runkle and the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. A couple of people have asked me if I'm going to do a video on the war in Ukraine, and I'm not a foreign policy expert, so I'm going to leave that to people who are more knowledgeable in that area. All I can say is that my heart is with the people in Ukraine, and like everyone else, all I can do is watch with a sense of horror and bleakness as we see what's happening. Instead, I'm going to cover something a little closer to home. Uh, EPS has just given an announcement that they have shot and killed one person and possibly a second. Um, and I'm going to have a look at the announcement that they made because uh, I have some criticisms of it. And this is a criticism that is common to many police announcements. It's in terms of the very artificial way that these things get phrased. And there's a lot that we can infer, and I'm going to make a bunch of guesses about what happened here based on what they say and what specifically they don't say. Because there's certain ways that they'll tiptoe around an issue in these police statements, and that's very much a way of them framing the issue. But quite frankly, I think that our news organizations need to call this out a little more and need to, need to just spend less time repeating some of these press releases uh, and more time kind of critically assessing them. So let's have a look. And as we go, I'm going to sort of stop this at various points and just kind of explain what I think that this means as, as we go. So let's have a look here. Yeah, good morning. And uh, first, I just want to thank you for joining uh, us on short notice. I'm just going to say a couple of things. First, the audio and video syncing is not always the best. Um, that's from the original video that I've got here. So nothing I can do about that. <clears throat> At approximately 6.25 p.m. last night, downtown branch officers responded to the report of a commercial robbery with a gun at a liquor store in the area of 113th Street and 104th Avenue. The male suspect fled the scene on foot prior to police arrival. So far, this is good. What we've got is a lot of active voice. The police responded to the things. The suspect fled. We know who's doing what. And in fairly clear, you know, fairly clear language. Uh, that's not going to, that's not going to hold. The man was located in the area of 105th Street and 107th Avenue around 7 p.m. So now you see we've switched the to the passive voice here. You know, it, the officers attended, you know, they responded, but now the man was located and suddenly we've dropped, you know, who's taking these actions. Was located by who? We assume it was by EPS, but maybe it was JTF2, maybe it was, you know, the GI Joes, who was it? We're getting into this thing where suddenly there's this diffusion of responsibility. When the male observed officers, he reportedly fled on foot. So the male is taking actions, but he was located. You can see that sort of branching and that differentiation there. Shortly thereafter, a confrontation occurred and officers discharged their firearms and the male subject was fatally wounded. A confrontation occurred. What does that mean? A confrontation? Who initiated this confrontation? What kind of confrontation was it? And, you know, the officers discharged their firearms. Were they hunting? Did they, you know, did they see a deer and they just happened to have a tag? Um, oh, wait, they were shooting at the person. You know, the officers shot and killed the suspect. Say what happened. You know, they weren't discharging their firearms because, you know, it was a celebration. They, you know, and of course that would be highly irresponsible. Um, they weren't shooting them off just because, hey, we just happened to notice we have guns. Let's see if those still work. They were shooting at the suspect and they shot and killed the suspect. Direct language, please. Officers located a weapon on scene. Note the difference that we had. They got a report of a robbery with a gun. They located a weapon on scene. Now, what does weapon mean? Well, weapon could be anything. Weapon could be a pocket knife. Weapon could be, you know, a piece of metal. Weapon could be a rock. But what they didn't say is gun. 
they said gun in one place and they're not saying gun in another what we can infer from that is that this probably was not a gun because if it was they'd have said um you know that seemed now i don't have all of the interview i understand that he was asked later was this a gun and he said we don't have that information well of course they have that information you know acer picked up whatever it was they can look at it they can say we think this is a gun at least and they haven't so that to me suggests not a gun now there's all sorts of there's a wide range maybe it's something that looks like a gun how much does it look like a gun is this a very realistic replica or you know is this a sort of bent piece of wood kind of vaguely gun shaped or you know again is it a knife is it a rock what is it so yeah that transition between gun and weapon is something that to me says not a gun a second male who was not involved in the reported incident and was in a nearby suite was also struck not involved in the reported incident just say he's an innocent bystander you know not involved with it kind of sounds like he's up to something no good as opposed to just being in the house now the police were asked in follow-up interviews as to the age of this person we they haven't answered that um i really hope it's not a child i really hope that but um yeah they've said and they've said that the reason why they won't answer those questions is that they haven't notified next of kin as of yet so i'll i'll give them that one but i mean it seems to me that they could at least have said hey you know this is an adult versus a child uh, that's not going to give away who it is so yeah anyway we'll carry on here oh and i'll just back up just a little bit here just so we can hear it again struck oops he was rushed by sweet was also struck he was struck you know struck by who struck how what did zombies invade and punch him in the face or did police officers shoot him you can say what happened if you're giving a press conference you know police officers shot him and they've said oh we don't know how he was struck um i'm sorry i find that very difficult to believe because you're gonna know the angles you're gonna know you know whatever else um i mean you can say we believe that officers discharged a firearm you know and shot at the suspect and it passed through a wall and killed an innocent bystander but they never want to phrase things directly so we have to interpret sort of around the the edges of the police statement weasel words he was rushed to hospital by paramedics where he sadly succumbed to his injuries so police shot and killed him is i think what they mean to say here and again that's my thought it is possible that the suspect shot and killed him but that doesn't seem likely from the phrasing of this so this is my guess, but I'm, it's a fairly confident guess. I'd put money on this. This is not easy news to share. The EPS and me personally, as the chief of police, want to extend our deepest condolences to those who are grieving today. And I think this is entirely proper for them to do. Uh, but I think that part of being respectful in these statements is not couching them in this way that makes it sound like, you know, that this was some miracle that happened out of nowhere, that, you know, lightning struck, you know, sorry, say what happened. You know, if you feel sorry about it, say what happened. We take these situations very seriously and we'll be fully cooperating with ACERT as they investigate to get the answers that we all need. And because it's ACERT on their timelines, we'll probably have an answer sometime around 2030. Um, ACERT is not fast about these things by any stretch. Um, if it were you or I, like if I had defended myself against somebody who showed up at my door with a, you know, a fire axe or a shotgun and I fired a weapon at them and it, you know, ended up killing the neighbor across the street. Um, I would be in cuffs right now. It wouldn't be an investigation that's going to take years to complete. 
involved EPS members were not physically injured and have been, have been engaging with our employee and family assistance program and peer support programs. As mentioned, these situations are not easy for anybody. I will now take questions. So, yeah, as I said, what we can sort of read between the lines on this one is, you know, it seems very likely that the police shot and killed the suspect. And I can't say whether that's a clean shoot or not. I don't know enough details here. You know, if the suspect turned and pointed something that looked like a firearm, even if it ultimately was not, um, then I would say that the police were probably, you know, were likely justified in taking the shot, even if the backstop was a house. You know, that's if you are in a situation of lethal peril, then it may be justified to take a shot and hope that no one is, you know, is behind there. But if not, then you have to start asking other questions in terms of what their alternatives were. Because one of the fundamental rules of gun safety is know your target and what is beyond it. And if you're, you know, if what's beyond it is a house, you have to consider the possibility that it's occupied, that it's occupied perhaps by, you know, that maybe there's a daycare being run out of that house. You don't know. So you have to consider those possibilities. I can't say whether this was a clean shoot or not because I don't know what these specifics were. But it it appears, and again, I'm saying I'm confident enough that I'd put money on this, notwithstanding the sort of weasel language in this press release, it appears that what was going on is that they shot and killed the suspect and in the process also shot and killed an innocent homeowner or you know, resident of the home. I don't know whether they own or rent or were visiting or whatever. Uh, but yeah. So I hate this sort of language. I would really like to see the press start calling them on it. And I think that the best way for them to do that is perhaps to just start inferring things from what they didn't say. You know, instead of saying, oh, police report that it's unknown whether they were the ones who, you know, how about framing it like this? If they're going to leave it open like that, Police do not deny that they shot the, you know, they don't deny killing the person. And when you see these news reports, I think it's really important that the media not parrot the language. You know, when he can say they discharged their firearm and not specify anything. You know, media people, you know what this means. Just come right out and say, you know, they shot at this person and killed them. You know, you don't have to use that same language. And I've seen several news stories that use that discharge the firearm language. And I, it really frustrates me to see. Um, certainly, as mentioned, if this was a member of the public who had, you know, shot at somebody and killed them, I don't think we'd see this discharge the firearm language. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I hope this has been helpful. I I sort of try to translate this. Maybe I'll make it a, a well, I hope not to make it a regular segment, but uh, we'll just, we'll see. I mean, every time I see these, it just frustrates me a little. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, I know this is a, a bit of a shorter video than I usually do, although I glance at the time and it's going to be about 15 minutes. So shorter is relative. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a longer video on a case called Sauve, and that is an important case for Canadian voting rights. And then I'll probably do a video answering a question somebody had about bail processes and publication bans. So that's kind of what's coming up in future. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've found it uh, educational. Uh, and I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Jonathan Wheeler, Canada's National Firearms Association, Kyle Martin, the CCFR, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sites and Arms Limited and Mark Olivier Demur. And at the $20 level, Peter Hilger, Mark Whittington, Jane Babin Luxor, Hay Wire, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Bruno R., Andrew Elsich, and Aaron Del So. Thank you as well to uh, the $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. And all of you who are watching and uh let me know your thoughts in the comments below i mean maybe you think i'm out of line here but uh yeah let me know thank you for watching and i hope this has armed you with knowledge